In the last step then, we created this wonderful landscape that you can see on screen. And in this step, we're going to look at the different ways we can manipulate this using the sculpting tools. So we'll get straight stuck in with that. So you can see that because we've now created the landscape, we've moved over to uh, the sculpt tool over here. And below that, you've got lots of different tools here. So you can see that you start with here and there's loads listed. So we've got sculpt, smooth, flatten, etc. And we'll have a look at most of these in turn. Uh, as well as that, you've got different types of brushes you can use. Now, I'm just going to stick to the circle brushes for what we're doing here, but they are worth experimenting with. Uh, and you can also change the way that the fall off happens. So that's to do with, if you look here, let me just uh, resize this brush if it'll let me. Whee! So you can see that um, the way that you've got two circles that make up this brush and the fall off between them changes based on this. So we could do a linear fall off um, and that would, hmm. to be fair, you don't actually see much change here. There you go, that's a bit more of a change. Um, and that will change the way that it transitions from kind of the center of the tool to the edge of the tool to keep things looking smoother. But again, we're just going to stick to smooth for this. Uh, and I'm just going to bring the size of my tool right now. Uh, I'm doing that when I change the size of the tool, I'm using the square bracket keys on the keyboard as well, which is a nice little shortcut. Okay, so we'll start looking at um, the sculpt tool. So we're already on that. And there are a few parameters for this. So you can see that you can change the, the tool strength now you're probably looking at a default value of 0 0.3 which i think is a default i always bring that down to 0 0.1 because i would rather build things up so i'd rather than just clicking and dragging once and like hoping that it looks okay i will click and drag over a few times and kind of build things up gradually and i feel that that gives me more control here's another way of changing your brush size so if i just put my brush there so you can see it and we can change the brush size using this slider as well and you can also change the fall off um, which is how smooth or hard the brush is. So if we go for a fall off of zero, that makes it a really harsh brush and you'll get some really kind of steep slopes at the edge. Or you could go crazy soft like that and that kind of is all soft. But I'm pretty happy with the default value of 0 0.5. Right, so the sculpt brush is additive and it is subtractive. So the additive part of that is if you just click and drag like this, so as I keep going, you can see that this is raising up and I'm just creating some nice hilly areas. Let me just get in a little bit closer so you can see a bit better. There we go. So as I click and drag, I will create little peaks. So that's the additive part. The subtractive part is the opposite of that. So if you want to go down, you want to create like maybe a river or a valley or a lake, then you hold shift on your keyboard and do the same thing. So I'm holding shift and this is now going to push the terrain down like that. Ooh, look at that. So I could create myself a really cool little downy bit. We'll call it a valley. So I'm just going for that. If I wanted to be quicker with this, I absolutely would turn the tool strength up. But I really am not a fan of having a higher tool strength because it just, you kind of lose control, uh, which I am a bit of a control freak. It's better to be in control, isn't it? Let's, let's be honest. Right, so there we go. So you can see that using um, those, the, just this one tool, I can do um, the peaks over here and the valleys over here. So that's kind of what the sculpt, sculpt tool is all about. And we're going to use that in a few steps time to create some kind of hilly terrain to enclose our level. Uh, and again, you can lower things and you don't just have to lower things kind of based on it being flat. So I could also lower these, these mountains that I've created as well just by holding shift. And I could bring up the center of this by not holding shift. So that's kind of what that tool is all about. So the next tool we'll look at is the smooth tool, which is just below the sculpt tool in the menu. And what this basically does, its function is to smooth out what you've done. So it kind of relaxes. If you've got something that's too harsh, it just relaxes that and makes everything look more subtle. So let's just get in on somewhere that's a bit more harsh. So like the top of this particular bit here, if I just run the smooth tool over that and it'll just chill it out a little bit and make everything blend together. So it's just kind of averaging out all the different vertices around and just saying, yeah, just just match up a little bit more, guys. Don't, don't be so different. And again, uh, I can do that in here. So if I just wanted to relax this bit that I've created here, just use the smooth tool and it'll just chill out. That's nice, nice and smooth. 
So that's what that tool is all about. And again, we'll be using that later um, just to make sure that nothing is too harsh. That's its function. That's what it lives for. Okay, the next tool we'll look at is kind of cool, really useful. Um, so the flatten tool does exactly that. So you can see that we've created kind of quite a random looking area here. Um, but maybe I want to put a castle on top of this somewhere. So I'll just bring my brush size down a little bit for this. Um, and the way this tool works is it starts from wherever you first click. So if I say that I want the height of this castle area um, to be here, I just start clicking. And what that will do is bring everything up to that exact height wherever I click. It will never, ever go above that height. So I, because I've got it on a lower tool strength, it doesn't necessarily do it all straight away. But you can see it's just creating a nice kind of flat plateau here um, that I might put my brand new castle on. And it blends it in kind of seamlessly with all the stuff around it as well. So that's what the flatten tool is all about. It makes stuff flat. It's a very descriptive name for the tool, isn't it? Okay, let's move on. Speaking of descriptive names for tools, we now have the ramp tool. So let's check that bad boy out. Here it is. And believe it or not, the clue is in the title. What this lives for is to create nice little ramps. So what you need to do, first of all, is click somewhere on your landscape. So just here. And that puts down the first kind of marker for where your ramp's going to be. And then I'll put another one here. And that creates a second one. And then you can decide how you want your ramp to go. So I'm going to raise this side here. You can actually raise both sides, I believe. Like that. But I just want... Um, well, let's see if I can put that one back down. Maybe not. Uh, I'll do it by hand. So you can choose two different points. And the other thing you can do um, is... Oh, um, you can set the width of this ramp as well. So you can have it be quite wide or quite narrow. And you can also change the way that it falls off on the side. So it can be very kind of sheer on the edge. Or it can kind of go quite yeah, like that. I think that's the technical term. Right, so once you're happy with your settings for your ramp... You just click on add and that's it you get yourself a ramp i do believe you can edit it after the fact yep so you can just change the points and click on add ramp and it should update so there you go so that's what that tool is all about and that can be really useful the next tools that we'll look at are the erosion tools and we will start with the first one in the list which is dry erosion or thermal erosion and what this does is it simulates the kind of transfer of dirt and rocks um, of landscape kind of over time and the shape that that would create so i will try and show you that i'm going to turn the tool strength up a little bit for this just so that it doesn't take all day um, and what i'm going to do is just paint over these mountain areas so what they're going to do is just subtly change the shape of this to try and simulate the way that this sort of bit of landscape would have formed over time and it tends to go a little bit sandy uh, it gets that kind of look from it using this tool so I'll just go a little bit more oh I think I'm shaking the camera sorry guys I'm getting a bit carried away uh, we'll go on the ramp as well we'll get that to erode a little bit and you can see it's just kind of making it look oh it's having a big effect on this bit here I like that and it just makes everything look a little bit more natural. So that is the function of this tool. And there you go. I'm actually a big fan of using this. It makes everything look a little bit more natural, a little bit more realistic. But you can go a step further than that with the next tool, which is Hydro Erosion. And again, I'm going to leave a default setting on this. And I'm going to have a slightly stronger tool strength. Um, but what this does, it simulates erosion again, but based on water travelling um through the terrain for millennia so we'll have a go at this one so we'll start over here and you should just see that it makes changes to the terrain so you can see it's just creating some little indentations down there at the bottom and generally you'll see water would settle where the um the slope meets the flat so just around these areas here and you can see that that's happening there uh, but it's a very cool tool you can see that this area here is quite nice see because these two uh, peaks have come together that's where water would have flowed down so it's kind of picked up on that and again it's another tool that you don't really want to overdo but it does give quite a nice effect and it adds an extra layer of realism to your landscape 
So that's that one. The next tool that we'll take a look at is the noise tool. And don't worry, it's not loud. It's like digital noise, it's visual noise. So we'll change to that tool, pop. And uh, what this one does is basically makes things bumpy. That's kind of what it does. So I'll just use this tool over here. I'll get a slightly bigger brush again. And it's just gonna raise things up and lower them down randomly, which is quite a nice way of adding some uh, variation to your terrain very quickly, like that. So you can see it's not just sculpted it all up or all down, it's got a real variation to it, um, which it's a little bit too harsh. It wouldn't be fun to run around if you were playing the game, but I did leave the tool strength turned way up. So I would now go over all that with a smooth brush and just get it to chill out a little bit. Okay, the uh, second to last tool that we're going to look at is the Read to Apologize tool. And the function of this is to resample where your vertices are so that you reduce texture stretching. So if I can find somewhere that's quite harsh. Um, oh, hello. Maybe I need to just turn my camera speed down a little bit for this. Um, so it's quite a harsh area here. I'll just turn this tool size down a little bit. Um, and what this will do is it will just move vertices around so that the texture will fit on them a little bit more evenly. So I'm just going to run the brush over this like that. And you don't really see much happening as you're doing it, but it's just making things a little bit more evenly spaced. And that's going to make sure that your texture fits on here a lot better. Like that. And that's all there is to that tool. If I press Ctrl and Z, you should see it pop back to what it was originally. There you go. So it's just made really subtle changes. So if I just keep stopping between those. And it's just meant, meant that there's going to be slightly less texture stretching. And that's the entire purpose of that tool. And the final tool, which I can't actually demonstrate to you, is the visibility tool. And you can use this to like paint little holes in your terrain to create cave openings and stuff like that. But as you can see by the error I've got on screen, that red writing, I can't use it yet because I haven't created a material for the landscape that's got this landscape visibility mask node attached to it. So it's worth playing with that kind of in your own time, but I'm not going to show you that in this video. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to all of the different sculpting tools that you've got for your landscape. So what we'll do now is we'll actually delete this landscape because all we've done is faff about with it. It doesn't actually look good, does it? Or mine doesn't, so I'm going to get rid of it. And in doing that, I'm also going to teach you how to delete a landscape. So, you know, it serves two functions. Right, so what we're going to do to get rid of this landscape then is go back to um, place mode. So we're just going to go over here. And once we've done that, we can now select things within the world outliner. So I want to select the landscape and also the landscape gizmo active actor like that, and I just held shift to select two things, and I'm just gonna press delete on my keyboard, and it's gone. Which means that we're now ready to move on to the next step. And what we'll do in that next step is we're gonna create another landscape, but this time we're gonna use a height map, so we'll cover that when we move on to the next one. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your learning further, I recommend an introduction to Unreal Engine 4 by Andrew Sanders, and Unreal Engine 4 Game Development Essentials by Satish PV. Check them out using the links in the video description below. Special thanks to my awesome patrons whose names are displayed on screen for supporting this video. If you'd also like to support my channel then go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.